Good evening. Uh, we're going to read out of the book of Ezekiel, Old Testament, the book of Ezekiel tonight. Ezekiel chapter 36, and we're going to read verse 26. Ezekiel chapter 36. And we'll read verse 26. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. Well, you'll find your place there. I'll go ahead and start with the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the day you've given us, Lord. Thank you, thank you for the time we're going to uh, look in your word tonight. And Father, I pray that as we um, look at your word, that, Lord, we'll get a even better uh, understanding of, of this relationship that we have with you. Father, open up our eyes, our ears, our minds, and just, Father, let us appreciate what you've done for us, but at the same time, let us see uh, the benefits of it and, and what we can use this wonderful covenant that we have with you for. Father, we love you and we thank you. We'll pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26, and it says, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And verse 27 says, And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. You know, I want to carry on with the, our messages that we've had in the last uh, two, three weeks about this new covenant. You know, we know in Hebrews chapter 8, it tells us that God gave to us a better covenant that was based upon better promises. And we know that covenant is when a person accepts Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, they accept what he did upon the cross. And right then and there, God enters into a covenant with you. And he tells us in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10, that he will be a God to us and we will be a people to him. And he takes that very seriously. And carrying along, carrying on with the, the thought of this new covenant so that we can get a better understanding of it. You know, a lot of people know what, you know, they know they're saved. They know they're going to go to heaven, but they don't really understand what this new covenant is all about. You know, the old covenant was the one that, that God gave to his people back in the wilderness whenever he brought them out of bondage, out of Egypt. And he, and, and it's called the Mosaic covenant. And through Moses, he gave them this covenant and it was a conditional covenant. Because it was based upon their uh, obeying Him. But this new covenant, this better covenant that we enter into with God when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior is unconditional. Because it's God that does it all. He, he started it. His Spirit inside of us keeps it. And so there's nothing that, that we can do that undoes it. But still we should learn more about it so that we can use it to influence more people to Jesus Christ. And so looking at verse 26 in Ezekiel chapter 36, I want to show you some promises that God makes about this new covenant. You know, um, this talking about this new covenant, it wasn't just something that God gave to us on a whim. Actually, this new covenant that I talked about in the New Testament, God talked a lot about it in the Old Testament through his prophets. And that's what this is, Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 26. It's God speaking through his prophets, telling us about this new covenant and what we have to look forward to. So, first promise that God gives to us, look at verse 26. He says, a new heart also will I give you. So, the first promise uh, that comes with this new covenant is that God tells us he will give us a new heart. Man, that's awesome. A new heart. Um, keep your finger marked there in Ezekiel, but go to Jeremiah chapter 24. Jeremiah chapter 24. Back a, a couple books. Jeremiah chapter 24. The book of Jeremiah chapter 24. And look at verse 7. Kind of tells us what this new heart that he's going to give us is. Jeremiah chapter 24. Look at verse 7. And it says, And I will give them an heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their gods, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. So this new heart, first of all, that God gives us in this new covenant back in the Old Testament, it tells us that it was a heart that would be able to know him. You say, well, why would we need a new heart in order to be able to know God? Still in the book of Jeremiah, go to chapter 17, verse 9. I'll show you. Jeremiah chapter 17, look at verse 9. 
Jeremiah chapter 17, look at verse 9. This is why we need new heart in order to know God. Because in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So a heart left on, on our own, you know, if we take our heart and just leave it apart from God, the Bible says that it's wicked, desperately wicked. But in this new covenant that we enter in when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, God says that he'll give us a new heart. And this new heart, it allows us to be able to know God, to know him, to appreciate him, to to serve him, to want to be close to him. Upon entering into this new covenant, God gives us a heart that is capable of understanding what he is, who he is, and what he does for us. Unconditional. Man, it's amazing how much God loves us. And if we didn't receive this new heart at at the point of salvation, then we wouldn't be able to understand the love that God loves us with. The love that is unconditional, the love that is um, see us through the roughest of times. That's why God gives us a new heart. Now going back to Ezekiel chapter 36 again, verse 26, look at the second promise. So first of all, we know that God says he'll give us a new heart. And then it says... And I will give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. A new spirit will I put within you. Say, well, what spirit does he put within us? Look at verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. So second promise is that God tells us he'll put within us a new spirit, which is his spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And how amazing that is. That, that God would see fit to not only enter into this new covenant with us, one that we couldn't mess up, but on top of it, he says, I'll put my spirit within you because then you'll be able to walk in my statutes. Look at verse 27 again. I'll put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. See, if it wasn't for his spirit, you know what would happen to this covenant we have with God? We would blow it off. We would blow it off so easily. We would disobey him. We wouldn't do what we're supposed to do. But God tells us in this new covenant, when he gives us this this Holy Spirit, his spirit to live and dwell inside of us, it says that it causes us to walk in the statutes. It causes us to understand them. It causes us to do them. How amazing uh, uh, is God to us by offering to let his spirit live inside of us. See, the thing about this new covenant is the, the, the reason that it still stands is because man can't mess it up. Because God does it all. Because not only did he initiate it, not only did he perform uh, what was needed for this covenant upon the cross, but his spirit living inside of us is what keeps us in this covenant with him is what keeps us from breaking this covenant with God. That's the key to a better covenant because man is filled with the Holy Spirit and controlled by God. Going back to Ezekiel chapter 36, look at verse 26 again. Look at the next promise. It says, first of all, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And then look at the the next promise. He says, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. What is a stony heart? A stony heart is a calloused heart. A calloused heart caused by sin. That's why sin is dangerous. Sin is dangerous because it will cause our heart to callous. It will cause our heart to grow old. Not 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 petrified, but it will cause us to to disobey God. It will cause us not to want to walk with God. It will callous our hearts. That's why God is so serious when it comes to sin. You know, the reason that that God the Son died upon the cross, that Jesus Christ died upon the cross, because sin was a problem. And when he let his blood be spilt upon the cross and he shed his blood upon that cross, it fulfilled the payment that God had set for sin. And so when he fulfilled the payment and our sins are washed away when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, it is Jesus Christ that has paid our sin debt. And our sin is taken away. That's why he went through such an extreme measure in order to take care of sin. Because sin is dangerous because it calluses the heart. When God takes away the stony heart, we become sensitive to him. 
we're, that's why a person is changed. Because when they, they accept Christ, their, their stony heart is taken out of them and God replaces it with that new heart. He takes that stony heart. He takes away the calluses. He takes away everything that would prevent us from understanding who he is and what he's all about. And then we get to enjoy this new life. We get to enjoy being this new creature under this wonderful and loving God. God takes away the stony heart. Then going back to Ezekiel chapter 36, look at verse 26 one more time. I want to show you the last promise. He says, A new heart also will I give you, a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. Then look at number four. And I will give you a heart of flesh. He'll give us a heart of flesh. That means he gives us a heart that is sensitive to his wants and desires in our life. He gives us a heart of flesh because in order to serve God in the right way, to serve him honestly, to serve him fully, we have to have a heart that is that has been broken, that is contrite, that, that is just sensitive to every leading that he puts into our lives, every opportunity that he puts into our lives, every person he puts into our lives. We have to have that right type of heart, that heart of flesh that makes us sensitive to see what why he's done what he's done. Because sometimes he'll lead a person into your life because you can answer questions they may have about Jesus Christ. Or you can lead them to Jesus Christ. Or you can listen to their problems and, and, and slowly bring them to a wonderful Savior. You know, God is, is a wonderful God. I mean, he has thought it all out with this new covenant. He, he made this, this, this covenant in the wilderness with his people, and it was conditional, but this better covenant is unconditional. And it's something that we get to enjoy. Because with this covenant, we, are, we have so many benefits that, that come along with it. And, and how amazing it is to realize that God is so loving that everything that he did was for us. And it's important that we understand this covenant that we have with him to understand the promises so that we can make sure that we're making use of those promises. And looking in Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26, we see these promises that God tells us. He'll give us a new heart. He'll give us a new spirit, his spirit. He'll take away the stony heart, but he'll give us a heart of flesh that is so sensitive to his leading. And all we have to do is look to him. Look to him at all times. We serve an awesome God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. And Father, I'm so thankful for this covenant that we have with you. Father, I just pray that we'll become more knowledgeable about it. And Father, as we learn more about it, Lord, we'll be able to put into action, Lord, why you made this covenant with us. Father, we know that you didn't uh, make this covenant just so that we could sit idly by. But Father, you made this covenant with us so that we could carry on with what you started so many years ago, bringing people to you. And Father, help us to be faithful to do it. We love you. We thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. I hope this finds you well. Uh, I know that this was short tonight. But, you know, realizing this new covenant is something special. And it's something to be excited about. And it's something that that we should be knowledgeable about so that we can in turn be the best that we can for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, I hope this finds you well. I hope you're doing well. Uh, we do have church on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Um, if you don't feel confident enough, I'll still keep making these videos. Uh, I know that some people like them. Um, before I, I do uh, end tonight, we do... Uh, always, if there's a special prayer request, you can always call me, text me, call Debbie, whatever, and I'll share it with you. Tonight we have a special one. Um, it's for uh, uh, Raymond's brother, Ernest. Uh, he's, he's not doing well. He has pneumonia. His heart isn't doing well. So I would like the church family to lift Ernest up in prayer. Pray for him. Pray that the hand of God will be upon him, uh, that God will help him to feel better, um, and pray that the doctors will do all that they need to do. So please pray for Ernest. 
Uh, pray that the Lord's hand will be upon him. Uh, let, again, I say, if there's a special prayer request you have, get a hold of me. Let me know because I'll definitely share it with everybody so that way we can all be praying for it at the same time. All right. Just know me and Debbie love you. We're thinking about you. If you need us, call us. We're just a phone call away. Thank you. Bye.